this should show you that doing what you want to do can work. Trying everything, testing, tinkering, figuring it out, it can take you wherever you want to go. Hello, everyone. Today, I want to share a CEDH Top 4 Sissy decklist that plays Planeswalkers and Legends like Tyvar, Sahili, Chainer, Niambi, and Loran. But the focus isn't the list itself, but the designer and their journey in succeeding with a deck they designed on their own terms. Malcolm's first commander was Sissy Weatherlight Captain. In fact, it was because of him I started playing Sissy myself. While I made a CDH deck that played every meta commander in a 5 color shell, he wanted a deck with every planeswalker from War the Spark that would win with Nicole Bolas, Dragon God. For those who don't know, this is how it works. You want a source that makes Wooburg, uh, ideally Dockside or Sovala, but Bloom Tender or Faber Elder will do. If you're using a dork, you'll need an additional step. You need to get something that untaps. Derevi, Kiora, Tyvar, any of these things will do. You take that step, you tutor it with Sisei, you untap your source, or you can go directly to Aminatu if you're using Dockside. Uh, Aminatu will flicker whatever your source is, allowing you to continue up the chain to tutor Oath of Teferi and Nicobola's Dragon God, which will create a loop wherein you can use one's Planeswalker's ability to flicker the other, uh, and each of them has an additional activation remaining once they're flickered. So they'll have two activations. You can activate Nicol Bolas's plus one. You can then exile a card from their board or hand. You can do this infinitely until they have no board, no hand, no ability to respond. And then you can use that to make infinite mana if need be to go on the deck and get something else to just close out the game. Eventually, I went off to explore how the deck worked with Jeggy, but Malcolm stayed true to his vision of his Sissé deck. Playing against Malcolm's deck was always like watching a Rube Goldberg machine being built, and every time this machine was beaten, Malcolm rebuilds it anew with new legends and tools to fit his needs. I think really important cards to the deck uh, include Sahili Rai. There are a lot of situations you can find yourself in where you don't have a red permanent and you want something that is very low to the ground it allows you to create wooberg from things like faber elder and bloom tender cards like niambi are amazing is the only two mana legend that is a dockside double the fact that it has flash is amazing there's no other ability to just pump your sissy at instant speed if you need a combat trick Shader is one of the best Rakdos permanents that you have access to. It's a haste enabler for dorks if you want to play them that way. Uh, it allows you to recur a lot of your creatures. Uh, the deck runs 26 creatures. People will want to kill your creatures. They don't like them on the board. The fact that you don't have to choose what you're reanimating and it still keeps it secret from your opponents when you activate it is great. Uh, if someone tries to remove Chainer, you can still activate his ability and it'll persist even when he's not on the battlefield. It can reanimate himself, in fact if somehow he ends up going to the graveyard. Urtai, absolutely indispensable as well. It having flash and it being a legendary stifle that also contributes to Sisei's power, it being something that you can tutor if you have a second tutor to protect your first, it's just tech that you want to have access to. I feel like Katilda is controversial. It does give you some value from things like Dranith Magistrate that aren't legendary, but also can contribute to having extra mana to cast spells. I like that it allows Sissé to tap for mana. And I've even had games that have stalled out that I've activated Katilda's second ability multiple times and just tried to beat people down. Loran is a special case. I think Loran serves double duty. It pseudo prevents people from going for Thoracle lines because you have an instant speed way to force them to draw. Their main uses of Loran is just to have something that destroys artifacts or enchantments. Being able to stop someone's breach with a tutor is insanely powerful. I think Luris is the unsung hero of the deck. Because so much of the of the creature base and so much of the artifact base is less than two mana, it can really help you recover from a board wipe if you see it. Sakashima the Imposter is this deck's all-star. It's this deck's handyman that covers every situation that you could want it to cover. Do you want someone else's commander? Do you want a second copy of Sise after someone stole your Sise? Do you want another dockside? What do you want? Sakashima can provide. Taking a look at 
at this list, a lot of players, including myself, would recommend dropping the complex combo machine for something that is leaner and more tried and true. And despite others converging upon archetypes like Blue Farm, Malcolm stayed dedicated in his version of Sisse, which is what today's deck tech is about. His dedication to making the best version of his deck and proving it in tournaments. Losing hurts. I know. I have lost games that I feel like I should have had the tech for while trying to build this deck. Do not be afraid of losing because losing is what teaches you what works and what doesn't. Change cards. Try weird stuff. Try stuff that people tell you will never work. Do not be afraid of it. It will save you. If you don't want to follow your own heart and copy a deck list somewhere, this tier list over here has all the deck lists you want to copy from for CDH. Or if you want to learn more strategy and improve your strategies, watch this video over here. This one for, for magic fundamentals. Okay, thanks for watching. Bye-bye.